I, I'm not going to say anything. We're, we're cutting that part out. We don't usually cut out these beginning parts out. We're, that part we're cutting out. I fucked up, and that's on me. And now everybody can wonder what I'm talking about. Okay. And you'll never know. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, okay. That's good. Guys, right. welcome back. It's winter. Winter time. It's real cold. We got our coffees. Yep. Drinking. You can tell that it's warm because Goku's all powered up here. It's... It's real good. Yeah. He's full power. Yeah. Oh, you got the orange one. No, it's like, yeah, I feel like mine's discolored. Yeah, no, that's there is one in the office that is like that. Usually I seem to get it. And I know. Today it's Well, your you turn. know, I'm drinking hot chocolate, so maybe it's like it's the, you know, the Right. The Scooty Puff Jr. equivalent. You're you're, you're <laughs> drinking hot chocolate? Yeah. Yeah. How's your Kokoro feel? about this hot chocolate. If I could dump this on you. No! <laughs> you know, if it weren't for the fact that we'd probably get some splash on these microphones and those are kind of expensive. Yeah, I know. You'd be like, hell yeah, do it. For the views. Yep. Scott's, <laughs> Scott's scalp, less expensive. We have a health plan. It's fine. The hot cocoa challenge. I'm doing this for ABL. No, it's cool. It's just like uh, just like you know, Gatorade. It's a congratulatory thing. It's, oh. Yeah, just yeah. the b- boiling hot chocolate. <laughs> just, everybody's happy, having a good time. So we were having a good time. Uh, <laughs> we were. Wait, and yeah. then I ruined it. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing here today because we yes. have changed our plans every 15 minutes up until this literal moment. So is this technically like the first one of this, winter? This is the first one of winter. Hey, welcome! Hey, welcome! Hey, yeah. Yeah, yeah, excited! Yeah. Uh, confetti! Yep. It's a new new time, new year, new anime season. Uh, we're going to be talking. You still got to catch them all. Yep. Sorry. Best, gonna, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Look, you Pokemon. never, never not be catching them all. That's, That's what I say about everything I do. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Pokemon STDs. I don't give a shit. I'm going to. Yep. Yep. <laughs> fighting Pokemon. Uh, fighting bug catchers in Pokemon <laughs> just no, took no. on a whole new meaning. <laughs> <laughs> So, guys, what we're going to do here today, we're going to do our regular FMK show. We've got three shows to talk about. These are Ancient Megas Bride, which yes. is coming back from last season. We know that's locked in. Hooray! Uh, we've got... So, we we kind of... This is a rule that's been on the books since last season, but we didn't really yeah. fully do it last season because last season started weird. But each of us do get a lock. Yeah. We get a show that we choose. The rest of it's decided by poll, but... We get get to each choose one show that's like, no, I want to talk about that. My lock is the Junji Ito collection. Mm-hmm. Scott's lock is Kokoku. Kokoku. Which we just watched the first episode of. Yeah. Uh, Kieran's lock, I guess we're going to call it uh, Devil Man Crybaby. Yeah, because it, it was, but I think yeah. we're going to change up how we do that. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. We were going to go ahead and do that week to week, but that is a Netflix show. We each watched the first episode of it. And we kind of, Kieran came into the office today and said, Ben, I think it's a real bad idea to space this out over 10 weeks. Scott came in and said the exact same thing <laughs> oh, to me. Okay, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're on the same page because I binged the whole thing. I'm ready to talk about the whole whole. Kid yeah. Kid. So uh-huh. we are, so Kieran has binged the whole thing. Scott and I have only watched the first episode. <clears throat> we are going to watch the whole thing in time for next week. That's going to be its own video because, yeah, nobody's going to sit and nobody's going to watch episode one of that and then go, well, the other nine are right here, but I want to wait <laughs> for to hear yeah. what Ben has to say about that shit. You know, it'll be kind of interesting because um, if we do the Devil Man Crybaby review, mm-hmm. I'm kind of wondering if we should do one that's with, with spoilers and one without. Because there's a lot, like, I don't know. It's, it's, it just came out. You know, I, I think I will have, I think we will have a better idea of if that's a good idea when all three of us have watched the whole thing yeah. and know how spoilerific it is. So yeah. we don't, uh, we'll we see. make decisions in advance. That's not how we do <laughs> things here. No. <laughs> no. So, so right here in this segment, we're going to be talking about uh, those three shows, Ancient Megas Bride, Junji Ito Collection, Kokoku. We're going to have our unsnipped segment. As we do, and then uh, we're going to record another video here today, which will probably come out before this, where we go down the list of the poll and talk about all that stuff. So if so, you're watching this, you've probably already seen the poll video. Yep, but I'm saying it out loud anyway. So, gents, without further... Oh, one thing. One thing. Maybe we should talk about what my lock was and what I'll be talking about on Snipped. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a very good point. Cause, so yeah, because Scott's lock was going to be card capture Sakura cleared card saga. Yeah, we were gonna make a special <laughs> exception to our no sequels rule since Scott wanted to see it and talk about it, and then I try I watched the first four episodes of the old series to try and get some kind of context, and then I watched the first episode 
of the new series, and I just felt lost. I felt oh, like yeah. I would have nothing meaningful to say about it other than, I'm lost, I don't know who these people are or why I should give a shit. Also, not for nothing, I'm a 35-year-old man. <laughs> I don't give a shit about any of this. Scott, tell us why we should give a shit. And then we eventually decided, you know what? Let's just cut out the middleman and skip straight to Scott tells us what happened in Card Captor Sakura this week. Yep. So for as long as Scott cares about continuing to watch that show, that'll be that'll be part of the unsnipped segment. I am more than happy to to I think I will I will get more out of listening to somebody who actually cares talk about it than try to Jesse yes. up some kind of an opinion myself. I, I agree. And this is exactly why the no sequels yep. rule is in play. It's why I was pushing so hard yep. for early on because I'm like, there are so many shows. Yep. Look at what happened with Gatto. And yep. that was supposed that was to be standalone. Yeah. yeah. Like, and I, you still got people like, eh, it would have been way better if you'd watched the first season. And they might have been completely right. I so. don't believe it for a second, but <laughs> I have to take their word for it because I don't know better and don't care enough to educate myself. Exactly. <laughs> That's how I do it. I love being too. an American. Yep. Uh, actually, another point of order. Uh, some people have asked how we're planning on handling this. Uh, so we're going to hold up our cards. We've got our lovely kill card and our lovely fuck card. We're going to be holding up cards for each of these episodes as just like a general thumbs up, thumbs down, judgment call. Nothing can get killed until it reaches its third episode. That's... That is Alrighty. the traditional arbitrary, hey, give any given show three episodes before you pass judgment. Arbitrary? That's our first date. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, without further ado, let's talk about our first date of the winter season for, for an old favorite, for, for Scott's waifu, Ancient Megas Bride. Yay. Yeah. In this episode 13, East West Home's Best... Chise and Elias shear the woolly bugs, and Chise is attacked by a snow bug, which steals her warmth in order to breed. Elias rescues her and warms her up, and asks her about her experience in the Land of the Dragons. Chise tells him about it, and then asks about the day she woke up to find him looming over her, and asks if he thought she looked tasty in that moment. Elias, disturbed, points his wand at her and says, This is not a memory that you need. Chise knocks his staff away and hugs him, telling him that, no, she does need it. Uh, she tells him about her first family, uh, her mother, father, brother, and says that she's not afraid of him. She's afraid of losing him the way she lost them. Elias tells her how he felt cold when she was away and asks what she would call that in human terms. She says it sounds like he felt lonely, and he is just delighted to have a word to describe that feeling and declares that she will be his teacher of human things. Some days later, a mysterious visitor called Ashen Eye knocks on Elias' door late at night. After a short exchange, he wraps Chise in a fox skin and transforms her into a fox to Elias' dismay. And that, that was a much longer plot summary than I usually do for this show, but I... I was unable to find that. I, I usually am able to find some kind of like broad overview. This episode was all in the details, and there was yeah. no way to meaningfully talk about it without those details. Totally. Yeah, I agree. Scott, as we'll we'll start off with you, as this is your waifu this season. How'd you feel about them little details? Oh, this is a weird season opening to me because the show is just going right into its next plot line. We get a lot of things with these little sheep bugs, which are just Pokemon, but I love them. They're really cute. <laughs> uh, and the fact that there's an ice one only kind of sends know, right? that home. I'm like, <laughs> oh, man, it's the Alolan variant. <laughs> hey, buddy. A uh, lot, lot more peril from those things than I would have expected. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of the cool things about Mega Sprite, I think, is that it always presents you with these... Like, oh, here's something cute and cuddly, but it could be really freaking dangerous, so be <laughs> careful. Um, it, it, it's good at subverting like that. The one thing about this that kind of bothered me a little bit was the stuff with the Ashen dude. Mm -hmm. um, I want to see how that pans out, but I kind of felt like, Elias, come on, buddy. Do a little, <laughs> like, I feel like sometimes he's way too good at protecting her, and then at other times I feel like, are you, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Kieran, how'd you feel about that? Um, I, I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Uh, I, I appreciate the, the no. I was worried they were going to hold out on her talking to him 
for a while. That was my big fear was mm-hmm. she missed her timing window. She's going to go back to being like kind of introverted because new season. We got to like have some conflict. Yeah. No, they, they didn't do that. They just went right to it. Her talking to him. That was the most important scene to me was her actually talking to him and him identifying that he has he's he felt lonely. That was that was a really touching scene. I love that response. Yeah, that was really good. However, I was still a little like uh, like kind of upset that we don't see him develop a bit more. I feel like but, but I don't know, maybe I'm asking a bit a bit too much because she even responds like he's still just a kid, you know, in in an adult body. Mm-hmm. But I was like, "Man, really? He just kind of plays it off." You know, she's like, "Oh, I need you. I need you here." And he's like, "Oh, oh, I don't know what to say. I'd be lying." Not to mention that unilateral decision that he makes to take that memory away from her is easily yeah. the most egregious thing he has done in episodes. And, uh, yeah, and totally. that, is, that is something that I think we will have to get deep into yeah. in the yeah. Yeah, segment. Totally. Yeah. But I consider that a highlight of the episode because it is, yeah, agreed, the mm. most disturbing thing. And I'm into it. I'm into that conflict. Yeah, like, same. I am it, too. It felt believable. It felt organic from the character. And guys, let's let's get some cards ready. I'm still fucking the show. Oh. oh yeah, I am most definitely fucking the show still. I mean, of course. Did Whoa. you expect any different? <laughs> I got it. Still fucking. Um, however, on the other hand, I am killing this new opening. <laughs> oh my Un- god! Un- unsnip, my dude. Unsnip. <laughs> we'll talk about it. <laughs> But guys, Ancient Magus Bride lives another day, surprising no one. But now, we're, we're getting into that new shit. <laughs> guys, let's talk about the Junji Ito collection. So this was my lock uh, for the season. I, I know very little about it other than that it is an anthology series. So episode to episode, uh, much like uh, Kino's Journey, but even more episodic to my understanding anyway this is a a well-regarded horror mangaka having a bunch of his short horror manga adapted uh into this anthology series and it sounds weird and different and that's that's all i wanted uh, you haven't even like you don't know anything about junji d- ito right nothing yeah he's a huge name so this this yeah. has had a pretty big buzz attached to it yeah so i'm <laughs> i'm really curious to see where this goes but in episode one Candle Jack is a creepy schoolboy who likes muttering to himself about how great he is and casting voodoo curses on people. When the Forest Meister gets tired of Candle Jack nailing voodoo dolls to his prized cedar trees, he sets bear traps for him. After catching Candle Jack in a trap, uh, thankfully on stilts so he's not injured, it, it's a whole thing, he threatens to turn him over to the police, but Candle Jack's big brother points out that the police ha- might have something to say about setting bear traps for people, so the Forest Meister reluctantly lets them off with a warning. Then, because there are a few minutes of runtime left, we see a couple whose daughter has been turned into a living doll somehow. It's kind of creepy. That's the whole thing. What a... So, in, in much the same way that we struggled with Kino, Kino's journey last season... I'm sort of struggling with the fact that this is just apparently a show that is not interested in sticking to the strictures of a traditional narrative. This is not telling a story with a beginning, middle, and end. This is just kind of, here's this creepy thing. I don't know. Okay, bye. The major problem is that Junji Ito uh, not only did horror, he Mm -hmm. also did comedies that were very eerie and very strange and (laughs) were all setups like... The entire point of the story that they adapted for the first episode, which I think was wholeheartedly a a mistake to do for a first episode of the Junji Ito collection, Mm -hmm. was, again, this was a comedy. This was meant to be funny. It it is supposed to be a little goofy. Yeah, Yeah. it was supposed to be goofy. And then they took an actually really creepy segment and then basically streamlined it to be a couple of minutes because, yeah, they had some runtime left over. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they did this. And I'm totally, like, we can't kill it this week anyway, but I'm still totally willing to, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, hold up the knife if you feel like it's knife worthy. But, uh, (laughs) uh, Kieran, on a a scale from knife worthy to fuck worthy, I mean, how you feeling? Where's your head at? Um, Well, do you want me to vote right now? I I mean, well, I mean, give us some some impressions. Um, So... I, I have experience with Junji Ito. I've read Uzumaki. I've read Amigahara Fault. I've read uh, and a bunch of other short stories he's done. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't remember them, but I've, I've read them a whole bunch in the past. I was on a big horror manga kick in high school. And I loved them. I absolutely loved them. Uh, I was very excited to hear about this. That said, the animation here, really bad. Um, <laughs> very inconsistent. Um, and yeah, really 
poor choice for a first episode in terms of something that would actually be engaging. Also, the tone and the music is really abrasive for stuff that should be more subtle. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I will still check it out because I am invested enough and I want to see the ones that I've already read. I want to see how those turn out before I really pass any judgment because I wasn't familiar with this. So who knows? Um, but yeah, I'm a little, uh, a little mixed right now. All right. Well, why don't you go ahead and, and hold up a card and show sure. us. Uh, let's unmix it for uh, a hot second. Man, so if this just this episode, I I would still still fuck it if it was just this episode. Mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting enough. It is different. It's something unique. Uh, the story's really weird, and the main character has a lot of fun with the unreliable narrator thing. You really just want to see this little shit bag get his get his shit kicked in. Um, and then the little thing at the end. I thought was creepy enough, but yeah, way too rushed. But I think it still has some merits to it. Um, I definitely uh, could st see myself fucking this if it gets better. Um, I'm gonna. I, I, it, there's a lot of things that make me really curious. I'm a huge fan of Junji Ito, mm -hmm. so I'm I'm gonna hold out, see where this goes. Uh, the uh, next episode could very well be much better than this. They again, I think it was just the wrong story for the first episode. Yeah, I I think in a situation like this where it's not getting cut, no matter what we do, it's it's kind of up in the air what a what a knife or an eggplant even means, but. Like, what a, what an eggplant has always meant to me is... <laughs> I want to give him an eggplant so yeah. he can just go on. <laughs> you know, in the context of this show is, is what I watch another episode yeah. is what it comes down to. So, like, if, it, if this episode was just a standalone thing, not part of a series, would never continue, I'd probably knife it, to be mm. honest. Yeah. I didn't think it was very good. <clears throat> but as an... As a first episode of an ongoing thing, it did enough for me that yeah. I'm that I'm gonna eggplant it. Cool. That's basically okay. where I am. Yeah, yeah. Because it's you know, it's kind of clumsy in a lot of ways, but it's like, and and the, I think I'm also always willing to give more latitude to anthology series just yes. because yeah. that next episode might be fucking anything. Yeah, because yeah. the presentation is like okay, it's yeah. really just the story that was the problem, and hey, we're we're done with it. We don't have to see it again. So. Yeah. Could could I honestly think it can only go up from here? Hopefully. Yep. <laughs> well, we'll see if it goes up from here next week. But in the meantime, <clears throat> let's see if Kukuku is an up or a down. And we just so this was a <laughs> a last minute change in lock after we decided how we were going to handle card yeah, capture soccer. Yeah, I, I decided to go with Kukuku. Yeah. So and you know what? That was that was a close runner up for my lock just mm -hmm. because again the premise sounds interesting. Yeah. And it uh, you know I've been trying to keep a close eye. You know we talk about meta gaming here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think we've all been kind of trying to keep a close eye on what's been getting the most buzz because it feels a little silly to use our lock on something that's almost certain to get voted in on the poll anyway. Yes. And it's not fair to say that this is getting no buzz, but it seems to be getting less buzz than a lot of other things. Yeah. Possibly because. It's well until recently it was yeah, getting was, sent yeah, to die say, on mm -hmm. Anime Strike. Uh, oh now, yeah, yeah. By yeah, the yeah, way, no, Anime bye, Strike. Anime strike. So. Yeah, don't expect Anime Strike up there anymore. Bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, last Friday, I believe it was, mm -hmm. they officially announced Anime Strike is going bye bye. All of the Anime Strike licenses are just being folded into normal ass Amazon Prime. No more double paywall. Yeah, and that does include this season's. Uh, they've been a little inconsistent with the messaging on this, but by all appearances, you know, Kokuku came out mm -hmm. like it should. That seems to mean like, yeah, this is this season's simulcasts are still getting simulcasts just on Amazon. Yeah, I think that, I think that's part of the reason why the buzz might be a little low is Amazon's communication is very bad about yeah. what's going to be out there and what is. I'm also glad. Uh, side note, glad everybody's watching Inu Yushiki now that it's there. Yes. Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> And yeah, if once that was again, your excuse for not watching it, totally check it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you have an Amazon Prime subscription and you've been holding off because you didn't want to, you know, futz with that double paywall, please check out Inuyashiki. It is wonderful. <laughs> Agreed. Kokoku. It's, yeah, Kieran's, yeah. Kieran's uh, waifu, Kieran's um, uh, bride. Yeah, it was my bride. Of, of last season and well-deserved, wonderful show. It's amazing. But in the meantime, also on Amazon Prime, we've got Kokoku. And in this episode one, main character Jury's brother and nephew are kidnapped. Her grandfather teaches her and her father to use a magic stone to stop time in order to rescue them. As they extract the hostages from the kidnappers, they are attacked by a group of people who can also move while time is stopped. As the episode ends, a giant freaky ghost monster thingy called Harold 
uh, as in H E R A L D. This is not some guy named Harold. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shows up. And that's kind of where it ends on a big old cliffhanger. And I don't know, this one's hard to talk about because we haven't, we have had like 20 minutes <laughs> yeah. to try and let this. Uh, yeah, well, uh, here, to start it off, I really liked this episode personally because it has a lot of very, I don't know, mature, like, it, man, yeah, 20 minutes was not good enough. <laughs> no, no, it was yeah, not. No. I feel like this is going to be one of the m more mature shows of the se season, even with its fantasy elements. We start off with this girl who's just trying to get a good job so she can support her what, nephew, I think? Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Her so, nephew is, is yeah this little kid, and the rest of her family are kind of a bunch of losers. Yeah. yeah her, we don't actually see her sister. Apparently, she has a regular-ass job. Uh, her mother apparently has a regular ass job. Don't see her either. What mm. we see the most is her granddad, who seems cool enough, but he's retired. Yeah. And her brother and father are unemployed and don't seem to be taking any steps <laughs> yeah. to rectify their situation. Playing video games, yeah. Yeah, drinking. The father's a sad sack, and the brother is pathetic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it actually rings pretty close to home with some of my relatives. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. And I just. I loved the opening segment because I really f felt like in that moment I got to feel I, like meet very human characters. Mm -hmm. So when the next, because the second part of this episode is them stopping time to yeah. go save their nephew and her nephew and brother who have been kidnapped by a gang. Yep. And at the end of that, a monster shows up. Um, and, and and apparently there's I think they're like this cult or something. It's hard to tell, I but. So, like, it's like not a whole lot happens in the first half of the episode other than introducing you to the characters. And in the second half, everything just goes crazy. And I'm okay with that for my first episode. Yeah. Like, I, I'm not sure what's going on, I'm, but I'm really curious. The art and the animation in this are were spectacular. It's some of the best 3D, like, compositing mm. I've seen. Just the stop motion that they did. Or not the stop motion. Like, mm. when time yeah. stops, they just... they. They were like, we've got yeah, so go much nuts. time, yeah, they go so nuts much with the budget. CG stuff. It's great. Yeah, I mean, the, the two jobs of a first episode are introduce the premise and make you want to see more, to hook you. And I yeah. think it did both of those things aces great. Like, obviously, there's a lot of stuff that we just don't fucking know what's even going on yet. But I want to know. So it did that for me. Yeah. Kieran, how'd you feel? I think I think the intro was a little too slow for me, but they didn't dwell on it like that long. They mm -hmm. they kick right off into the stuff that I really cared about, which is stopping time. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, this actually had a previous adaptation before. What? Uh, it yeah, know. it actually had a movie adaptation called Clock Stoppers. Uh, Nickelodeon made it. <laughs> oh, fuck <laughs> you. Uh, directed. <laughs> Directed, if I might point out, by Star Trek's Jonathan Frakes. Yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Jonathan Frakes? <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Jonathan, since Star Trek, he has mostly been a director. Mostly on other Star Trek shows, but <laughs> but he had he had a one he had a onesie with clock stoppers. Yep. Um, wow. <laughs> but no, I, I I just couldn't stop thinking about that as soon as they stopped time and then the other guys show up. I'm like, oh no, they know how to also time stop. Yep. Um, it was neat. Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about the implication that there's some like Keke Genkai bloodline stuff going on already. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't know how how much we'll get into the superpowers because the grandpa starts teleporting yeah. at the end. Um, but it was really interesting. I like the design of these like these weird ethereal light creatures show up when they first use the stone looks really cool and the the effects of like this it kind of reminds me of stranger things this like dust like this light over mm. this dust that's kind of just hanging in the air and you see like this kind of shadow and you see it in a bunch of shots and people don't even acknowledge it mm -hmm. you can see it like behind some characters until it finally manifests at the end i'm very intrigued it sounds cool um yeah i, I enjoyed it very cool. Well, uh, I'll I'll be the first to hold up a card. Like, yeah, I'm really intrigued. I want to see more. Fucking it. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna fuck it. Glad I made this my lock, at least for now. So yeah. we'll see where it goes. Yeah, start a uh, little slow start. Um, stick with it. Once they stop time, it's it's a trip. It's really cool. All right. Well, guys, that is our main show. We will be back on the unsnipped segment to get into that nitty and that gritty. See you next time. See ya. Yeah.